Hi guys, today is the 22nd of March 2019 at 9.47 in the morning and news just keeps on developing every day. Um, the US will recognise Israel's sovereignty over the Golden Heights next week. So Donald Trump has just made this all of a sudden out of the blue announcement. Obviously it comes as Netanyahu is about to face a very tough uh, election and uh, is facing possible indictment at the same time. And a move like this may look good. It looks good on the surface. You know, Donald Trump recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital, Donald Trump recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. But you have to realize that there's been a delicate balancing act in the Middle East for many, many years. And this has just tipped it in one direction. Obviously, this is just rhetoric at the moment. But if it actually goes ahead as a, you know, a proper declaration and other countries follow, then it's a bit more serious because it means in law terms it would uh, make any attacks on the Golan Heights basically an invasion of Israel rather than this place of kind of like a no man's land at the moment where the two sides can kind of interact without causing uh, you know an international incident and then you've got the Syria troop removal and you've got the Iran nuclear deal, all of it just pulls at the threads of the, you know, the tenuous structure of the kind of, kind of um, agreement they have in the Middle East. So look out for escalations. Um, that's coming straight, I think, at the same time as um, Netanyahu will visit the White House, so that's on the 25th, and he'll be there on the 26th for a White House dinner, and I'm assuming he will leave on the 27th, probably in the morning, um, which is interesting, because the 27th of March is also the 21st lunar day in the second lunar month, you can see just here, 27th, and 27 is a number that has been shown in the IPEC Go 2 video, so I'll be watching next week. Uh, quite intensely, Syria slams Trump, vows to recover Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. So as I said, this is just spurring more confrontation or potential confrontation in the Middle East with all these different announcements. And obviously, Syria is not none too happy about that. And as, as it says on the title, they vowed to recover Israeli-occupied Golan um, that's probably going to be with the support of Iran, who also says recognition, recognition of Israel's sovereignty over Golan is unacceptable. And we know that there's, well, the reports say that there's around 70,000 Shiite fighters in Syria, various military bases, which Israel have been trying to take out over the last couple of years. Um, but they're still there, so they could be used in any sort of offensive that Syria may want to pursue in relation to the Golan Heights. At the same time, other supporters like Russia, um, even Turkey, a NATO ally, kind of, um, is saying there will be more violence if you go ahead with the recognition of uh, Israel's claim to the Golan Heights. So there's a lot of tension building in the Middle East. Already there's tension there. Um, but, you know, in relation to Israel being attacked by multiple sources, the tensions are only building. And I didn't bring up the reports, but there's also the situations around the Temple Mount as well that's going on at the moment. They kind of want to close it down. Like, uh, Muslims want to build a mosque, not build one, but recognize a building as a mosque there. And it's, it's all sorts of tensions going on and, uh, you know, could lead to more violence if they decide to kind of shut down the Temple Mount. So, keeping my eyes on all of that. And then you've got the Midwest suffering from flooding, which has killed livestock, ruined harvests, and has farmers worried for their future. On top of that, it just makes it worse that the trade war is going on at the same time as this flooding, because obviously money that farmers could have had, they don't have. And on top of that, they've got this. And it just having the whole title, the different amounts of livestock, the pigs, the chickens, the cows, all sorts of animals, uh, 
being killed by flooding across the entire Midwest, uh, which is basically the food bank of the United States, just brings to mind the biblical passage of, you know, the birds of the, sorry, the beasts of the field uh, being taken away. So keeping eyes on that because it looks as if there is more flooding set to come in next week um, as the snows melt and travel down the river, which has already overflown its banks, um, as you're probably well aware. And then the US slapped sanctions on two Chinese firms doing business, business with North Korea. And obviously the race, relationship between China and North Korea is way stronger than the relationship between China and America, or North Korea and America. So it's kind of obvious to see that anything that happens with China will have some sort of effect in terms of the negotiations with North Korea. Now, doing this, slapping sanctions on Chinese firms in association with North Korea, only makes the trade war with China more difficult and also results in things like this, North Korea pulling out of inter-Korea liaison office in Seoul. So they had this liaison office that they uh, set up, I think it was last year, um, in connection with this whole peace negotiation thing. Um, it's, it's not a sign that they're walking away from talks, but it is a sign that they're potentially going to. Um, along with them rebuilding their missile site, it's all kind of like moving in that direction, as in, if you're not going to lift sanctions on our country, then we're going to go back to our old ways. Um, but they're in a stronger position now because they've had all this opportunity to continue developing. They haven't gotten rid of, uh, rid of a single missile or nuclear warhead. So they can only be in a better position. And um, they have more support, you know, globally in terms of the optics. You know, they've made the effort of going to two summits. They did, you know, destroy a, well, made it look like they destroyed an underground uh, testing site. So it looks, you know, to the globe that they were making efforts. And because there's no give on the sanctions, even a little bit, they're kind of going backwards. And obviously, again, that's kind of connected with Donald Trump. So you've got the whole situation in the Middle East with this uh, Israeli situation in Syria, and you've got the China trade talks, and you've got the Iran nuclear deal, and uh, you've got the North Korea peace talks. So it all kind of hinges on this one guy. And he's kind of involved himself directly in all these negotiations and talks. So if it falls apart, you know, there's no one else to really blame. If you see what I'm saying, but if it goes well, again, there's no one else to really congratulate. And I think that's kind of what he's banking on in terms of what he's doing. He really wants that Nobel Peace Prize. And then we have Brexit. So they, the EU have agreed to delay Brexit um, up to... <laughs> Sorry, didn't realise that was going to happen. So yeah, they've agreed to delay Brexit up to, I think it's May 22nd, Theresa May, May 22nd, and um, it's only if the Parliament can agree to a deal next week, and the deal is pretty much going to be the same, although the Speaker of the House of Commons said that Theresa May can't bring forth the same deal that she's already brought forth twice, which has been defeated in the House of Commons. So there will probably be some small adjustments to it. And depending on the fear factor of a no-deal Brexit, um, it may be agreed to. But the, the way that the previous deal was uh, voted down twice, it doesn't make it viable that the next deal that she brings up, which won't be <laughs> really any different, um, will have any difference in the votes. So if that's the case, then Brexit date is April the 12th, unconditionally. So if nothing can be agreed between now 
and next week in terms of the deal that uh, Theresa May is going to agree with the EU, then we will be leaving the EU on April the 12th instead of May the 22nd, which obviously bolsters the potential for a no-deal Brexit and all sorts of chaos unfolding after that. So that's pretty much everything that's gone on this week and is going on next week. And obviously there's a lot of references to next week, so I'm going to be keeping keeping close watch on, on what happens then. Um, obviously next week encompasses March 29th, which I got from the simple code date, just if you're not aware by now, from September the 11th, just adding one to the day, the month and the year until you get to the 29th of March 2019, which was supposed to be the date of Brexit, which has now been delayed to either April the 12th or May the 22nd. But there's still potential for things to occur on that date of incredible significance. And on the lunar calendar in the year of the pig, March the 27th is the 21st lunar day. You've got the 22nd lunar day for the 28th and the 29th of March is the 23rd lunar day in the second lunar month, which is 223, which is something that we've seen in the IPEC Go To video, and it could be that is a reference. Not sure, but it is a connection. So, you guys, with all that said, thank you for listening. Um, hopefully, nothing happens next week, but there's a lot of things unfolding, a lot of things to watch. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and may the Heavenly Father bless you.